Okay, let's talk about calculus. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that uh, you're either interested in studying calculus, or you may be just interested in what calculus is, or maybe you are actually currently a calculus student. Either way, what I'm going to try to do is give you a basic understanding, a quick introduction to this concept right here called limits. Now, we can see this right here in this notation. This is something that you would see in a calculus course. This is effectively like a calculus problem or even a pre-calculus problem. But here we have this LIM, x uh, going to infinity, 1 over x. What does this all mean? Well, this is really, really important to the foundational concepts of calculus. Okay, so let's get into this concept of limits. Now, I mean, this is pretty crazy looking notation. We're like, what does this mean? You know, what is this all about? Well, let's kind of uh, take a look at an example problem to try to introduce you to this concept of limits. All right, now uh, I'm gonna explain something here and hopefully you have some basic level, uh, uh, basic algebra knowledge, right? I'm talking about maybe like the algebra one knowledge. So what we're looking at here is what we call a function. And again, if you've taken a course like first year algebra, algebra one, you should be able to understand what this thing is. Now, what I've done is graph this function. So this is more or less the graph of this function. Now, why this is the graph, that's a whole other topic, but just kind of trust me, if we were to graph this, this would be the function. And you can see here, we have this hole right here. Okay, so here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. Here at one, there's a hole. Okay, now why is there no graph right there? Okay, effectively, I can kind of just erase that right there. That's like a missing part of the graph. You're like, hey, what happened to the graph here? It's missing, so we'll just put a little hole like that. Well, it's missing because at one, okay, right there, we cannot evaluate this function for one. Well, we can try, right? Let's see what happens when we try. So if we wanted to find f of one, i.e. this point right there, we would go what, one, we replace all these x's with one, and we got one cubed minus one over one minus one. And here we run into problems. This is a good way to blow up this function, and we don't want to do that, right? I mean, that's the last thing we need. So one minus one is what? Zero, okay? So you can never have zero in the denominator. That will blow up your function, and then you have other problems. So we have to restrict one from the domain, okay, I'm kind of using some algebra terms here, terms here, excuse me. So one cannot be part of the domain because if we plug in one, again, we're going to blow up the function and we don't want that to happen. All right, so again, uh, uh, because one cannot be part of the domain, i.e. the set of input values, when we graph this, we have to just show, hey, there's a hole here, there's no value because one is restricted from this function. So this uh, function technically I could should put a uh, I should put x cannot be equal to one for the reason why I just said okay no problem but here's the deal you can see here if we kind of look along this graph if we kind of approach one okay we do have values here right so in other words so right here this is one half this is one and uh, one and a half and here's two i mean there's values along this graph what happens if we get like super close to one in other words as we approach one from both sides what is the value going to be right here now we, we're approaching from the left and we're approaching it to the right so we're trying to get super super close to this uh, off limit value okay so what is that actual value if we get infinitely close imagine if we get like really 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 close from the left and from the right now we can't touch one but what would be this value okay so this is kind of just a real kind of basic uh, explanation of the concept of limits. What we're trying to do is to, to determine this value that as if we approach this uh, one, okay, on this particular graph, as we get closer and closer to it from the left and right, what would be the, um, if we got infinitely close to it, what would be the actual value? So we would try to find the limit, okay? So that's what this is called. We're trying to uh, get the actual value right there if we get infinitely close to it, but we don't touch it. All right, so hopefully that basic explanation uh, makes some sense. That is the whole idea of limits. Now, when you study calculus formally, there is a lot to this. There's a stuff called epsilon and delta and 
there's a lot of rules to limits on, you know, if you take calculus, if you're intending to be a full, you know, uh, go, enroll in a full calculus course, you'll learn all about this. So, so this video again is intended just to give anyone out there, even those of you that are, have no intention of taking calculus, just basic, uh, flavor, a basic sense of what limits are about. So let's go ahead and take this to the next level. So let's try to determine what that value would be. Okay. As we approach one from both the left and right, i.e. we want to find the limit of this function as it approaches one. Okay. So we would use this fancy notation. So here you can see this is our uh, function uh, f of x is equal to x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So we can write this fancy notation right here. So we want to find the limit as x approaches 1. Okay. Now you could approach a function from the left and right. Again, I'm just going to leave, uh, I'm not going to get overly technical for this quick introduction to limits. But basically, we can write this right here. So what is the value of this function? as x approaches 1. Of course, uh, x can never be 1, but what it would be the, uh, you know, what what number, what value is it approaching from both the left and right hand side of the graph? Well, if we want to figure that out, we would do this. We would find out, we would want to ask the question, all right, what's the limit as x approaches 1 to this function? So now let's go ahead and talk about how we actually answer this question. Okay, so what we have to uh, do is use our algebra knowledge, okay? So again, you're taking calculus, you should have some strong algebra skills, certainly, um, you know, a requirement. But here, this x cubed minus 1, this is actually something called the difference of two cubes, and we can use our awesome factoring skills to factor x cubed minus 1 this way. So the x cubed minus 1 is equal to x minus 1, times this trinomial x squared plus x plus 1, and then we have that over x minus 1. Now, the lovely thing about factoring this function this way is that these x minus 1s, uh, these factors, uh, cross cancel. Okay, so we want to kind of use our algebra skills and get rid of um, fractions if we can. There's all different sorts of techniques to evaluating the limits of uh, respective functions or uh, various functions. So here is uh, an opportunity where you can factor, definitely factor and simplify uh, that function that you're looking at. All right, so we're going to cross cancel these factors. So effectively, uh, our problem is now down to this. You can see how we cross cancel this. Now we're going to find the limit as x approaches one of this trinomial here. So how do we do that? Well, there is a basic um, kind of theorem, a uh, law property that you learn in calculus, but I'm basically going to simplify it. When we're finding the limit of a constant value in a situation like this, it's literally as easy as just plugging in this number. Okay, so this number one, we're just going to plug it in to this um, uh, function. Now here we have no denominator, no restrictions on this, like x minus one. So we can plug in one right here, not a problem. So that's going to be what one squared plus one uh, plus one. So when I do all this, you get three, and that is the answer. Okay, so effectively, the limit as x approaches one of our original function here is three. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go back and take a look at our graph right here. So recall that our graph had this hole in it at one, but effectively, as we get closer and closer to uh, one on this function from both the left and right, we're going, we're getting super close to three. Okay. That's basically what it means. So this coordinate right there would be one, three. Now, of course, we can't ever touch it with that one, but that's effectively what that means. Okay, so hopefully that, you know, makes sense to you. This is a basic uh, limit problem. Let's talk uh, about finding the limit when something is approaching infinity. Okay, so you can, uh, the last problem we talked about was the limit when a number x was approaching a constant value like uh, three or one. But what happens when x is approaching affinity? Well, infinity, excuse me, not affinity. Affinity means uh, a pretty, uh, let me, um, 
Like because I said the word, affinity is like you like something, right? That's pretty much it. Or you have an affinity for something. So hopefully you have a, an affinity for an affi <laughs> infinity. Uh, you know, I should just really stick to the math because my jokes are not that good. But anyways, you know, we're trying to make this an easygoing video. All right. So anyways, uh, we have the limit as X goes to infinity one over X. So what does that mean? Well, Let's, uh, let's just kind of think about this for a second. Infinity is what? It's a very large number, right? This is a big number. So one thing you can kind of do is like, all right, we have one over the biggest number in the universe, right? One over the biggest number in the universe. That's what X is approaching to. So what is kind of going on here? Well, let's just start looking at some patterns of fractions as the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, this thing is going to get infinitely big. So here we have one half. All right, so let's just start increasing that denominator one tenth. And then we have one over 30,000. What's going on with these values, right? Like if you're comparing the values, well, hopefully you recognize that this uh, fraction here is much, much smaller uh, in terms of value as this number. So as we increase the denominator, the overall uh, value of the fraction is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So here, for example, here is one, here is uh, zero, okay? As we increase the uh, uh, fractions or the denominators here, right? We're going closer and closer to what? Well, we're getting close, we're basically decreasing the whole value of this thing, okay? We started off here with one half, and then we're kind of, you know, really getting down over here. But now I want you to kind of guess, right? What do you think is going to happen when we take that denominator, we make it infinitely large. Where are we approaching? Okay. What value are we approaching? And I'm kind of giving you a hint right there. All right. So hint, hint, hint. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. If you said zero, you would be absolutely correct. So we have this basic rule here. The limit as X approaches infinity, one over X is zero. Okay, so this is pretty much a very basic kind of rule or property when you're uh, uh, studying uh, limits where a value is approaching infinity or uh, infinity, excuse me. So in calculus, when you're talking about limits, you're talking about when values are uh, approaching uh, particular constants, and then you do a lot with infinity as well. Let's take a look at a quick problem, and then we'll wrap this up. So here, let's figure out this function. The limit as x goes to infinity, we have pi times the square root of 3 over x squared. So to figure this out, we have to use our awesome um, algebra skills, okay? So you can see algebra is coming up over and over again in calculus, all right? You have to have super strong algebra skills, uh, and that's why you know being um, you know successful in a course like pre-calculus is going to set you up for success in calculus. So, if you struggle with you know high school level algebra, algebra one, algebra two, you know college algebra, pre-calculus, you're gonna have a tough time in calculus because you're gonna need all those strong algebra skills. But anyways, what we can do here is factor this. So we need to look for creative ways to factor this expression. So we can factor this this way, pi times the square root of three times one over x times one over x. Because one over x times one over x, this right here, if I multiply this together, this is one over x squared, one over x squared times this gets us back to this. But I want to kind of factor all this out. And then what we're going to do is take the limit of each of those factors. That's another rule that we can do. So we can find the limit of the first factor as x goes to infinity. And then we have the limit of the second factor, which is one over x as x goes to infinity. And then that's uh, going to be multiplied by the limit of one over x as x goes to infinity. Now, when we're uh, 
uh, looking to evaluate a limit as x goes to infinity of a constant. It's just simply going to be that number. But here, we just figured out what the limit as x goes to infinity 1 over x, right? We just went through that, and we, that's going to be 0, right? Because our denominator is going to be infinitely large. So when we evaluate this limit, that's 0. And then this one right here is also going to be 0. So 0 times 0 times pi times the square root of 3 is what? That's just going to be 0. So our final answer here would be 0. Okay, so calculus is an awesome course. I mean, there is a ton to learn. But, you know, what I try to do with these videos is try to, you know, get those of you out there that are interested in calculus, excited about the concepts in calculus, and uh, you know, try to really, really uh, give you these really um, kind of basic introductions to some of the meanings of calculus. Now, if you happen to be a calculus professor or whatnot, you're like, well, you're missing this, you're missing that, you should have said this. Well, let's not get that. But this is not designed to be a formal calculus lesson. Those of you that are actually taking the course will get all that kind of good stuff. But uh, even if you don't take calculus, at least the next time uh, you see this notation, you're like, oh yeah, I kind of know what that means. It means a limit and you'll at least have some basic reference to this. And um, Again, if you are going to be taking calculus, you need to be absolutely successful at the pre-calculus level. So if you need help in pre-calculus, just go to my main website under my middle and high school level mathematics. You'll see my pre-calculus course, and that can really, really help you out if you happen to be at that level. Okay, so if this video was interesting, even in the slightest, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.